Hello, hello everybody. What's going on? Come on in today. Or if you are watching the replay, listen. You want to stay on for this Facebook Live. I've already done a live and I felt the fire of God during that live. And it is going to carry over to this live. And I believe God is going to speak to us tonight. Um, I'm just ready for whatever God wants to do and say. I just feel this wild... Uh, break out of the Holy Ghost. I really do. So I've got some music going. I'm going to give you an announcement. I'm going to pray for people. I love getting on here. Lately, I've been getting on and just saying, hey, let me just pray for you. And um, people have received prophetic words. People have received, uh, um, got words of knowledge, words of wisdom, encouragement. Healings have happened right here on this Facebook Live. I've shared some of the testimonies and reposted, but God moves. That's all I want to say is God moves and is moving. I have my guitar here um, just in case because I just feel that kind of flow going. I just, I, I don't know what God wants to do, but I'm very, very careful in this season that he has me on. You guys know I used to say, I'm going to come on every day. I'm going to come on this day every week and right now. Uh, following the leading of my leader, I'm not doing anything without praying and really saying, okay, God, can I even do a Facebook Live right now? Do you want me to even sing the scriptures today? And is it is it truly you? I want it to be God. I don't want it to be out of just something I'm normally doing for this season. Okay? So, hello, listen, as you're coming on, I want to pray, but I want to greet you as well and call out your name and just give you a shout out so please even if you're watching the replay put your name down put your city hello hello myra edwin jj what's going on my brother cheryl my sister my dear students come on goldie my student alice hello hello donna what is going on marquita my student i love you guys so much Teresa, hello. Listen, everybody, share this. You know somebody that needs prayer. You know somebody that needs to get their fire back. You know somebody that's been struggling. You know somebody that needs encouragement. Share. Begin to share. I'm going to give everybody a moment. This is the time right now where we're going to share. Somebody's on here. Like, I don't want to share. I don't do that. Then just bump. <laughs> Let me not get started today, because it's Friday, and I'm just, I'm just going to stay in the vein of joy. But for real, share. Come on, I'm going to pray for needs. I have my Bible. I have my guitar. I'm going to give an announcement, but really, I, I, I could use this whole video if I felt like it. To talk about my open enrollment. I could talk about the groan. I could talk about all the events I'm doing, but I just feel the stirring of the Lord. To encourage somebody, you're going to get your fire back. You're going to get your fire back. You're going to get your fire back. Oh, God. Wow. Come on. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord stirring up already. You're going to get your fire back. Why are you upset? You're going to get your fire back. You're going to get your fire back. I'm prophesying tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to get your fire back. Oh, yes. You're going to get your fire back. And you're going to minister with fire. And you're going to speak again with fire. And you're going to sing and, and lead worship again with fire. And you're going to write with fire. God's speaking already, so keep coming in, keep coming in. I'm sharing this as well. I'm going to try your shirt. Says, my shirt says T-shirt. Isn't that cute with a little tea bag? <laughs> it tickled me, so. You're going to get your fire back. You're going to get your fire back. Thank you, Jesus. So listen, before I even get started, because once I get going, I won't be able to pull back just I, it's gonna be crazy tonight it's gonna be crazy tonight I'm telling you I, I I I just know it I feel it 
Yes. Let me just get this out the way. Listen, I have an online academy. Currently, there are a total amount. I haven't done, I mean, let me give you a, a roundabout number. People that have actually registered and said, we're gonna sign up for this academy, whether we're taking one class or we're taking all of them and we're in the members club or we're just gonna do this one and we're gonna be out. Uh, there's a total of uh, 1,500 students. I have smaller amount of that that are in my membership club, my membership program, my mentoring program, where I get on live videos or we do prayer calls and we, not phone calls, but through live videos where everybody can participate. And I talk to them and I mentor them and I give them ouch moments and I I'm, I bring hard words. Sometimes they don't feel good and they really cause us to move up. My academy is now open. I opened it months and months ago and I said, whoever wants in, get in now. I open it for two weeks and then I shut it down. And I had all the people that said, I want to get in. Uh-uh. I open it for two weeks and then I say, whoever's in, now you can have my heart. Now I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to write content for you. I'm going to stir you. I'm going to get my team together. We're going to pray. We're going to intercede. We're going to talk to you. We're going to communicate through email and messages, all that stuff for those that said, yes, I'll commit $20. Most people are doing $20. It's not breaking the bank. I'm praying it's not. I even sponsored some people and this time I'm not doing that. But I do, I have people that just, the whole year, I said, I'm just gonna let you come in for the whole year. Um, go sign up, go sign up. Can I put it even in this? I wonder if I can type a comment, let me see. Boom. There it is, right there on the screen. Go and become a student of mine. Each month, I'm gonna give you a live webinar. You get to join in live, you can watch the replay, whatever you do. Monday through Friday, you actually have video lessons. There's an app. You can get your, you can get your all your lessons on an app. You get a book, an ebook for the lessons. I talked about Fear is a Liar. That was one of my favorite courses that I offer. Fear is a Liar: How to Overcome Fear and Anxiety and Walk in Boldness. The main things that I taught in that group, and I'm, I, as soon as I get that printed out, all my lessons will be printed out like this. But for those that don't like printed versions, I offer ebook versions. This is something that I wrote up. This is for my Level Up Life course. Each day, look, day seven, whatever day. Yeah, day seven. Practical, application, focus, prayer, activation, devotion, all that good stuff. But the two things I talked about for fear is a liar is, number one, fear is a demon, spirit. And number two, fear is a liar. A lot of people don't realize that. They're like, oh, I'm just so worried. I'm just so panicked. We've accepted that as like normal life now. The devil is a liar. It's a spirit. That's why God said, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So people are like, oh, how do I get rid of fear? And they're just like, oh, well, just perfect love casts out fear. Yeah, you're saying that, but you're not living it. You sometimes need extra teaching to help stir your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Somebody was on here and they were just being rude about my stuff. I'm like, get off my page if you don't like it. But they're like, people don't need to take a course. All they got to do is read their Bible. Listen, honey, I was reading my Bible and I needed somebody to come alongside me and help me and say, hey, you read that scripture, but have you ever thought about this? That's what it really means. And you can apply it like this. I needed that extra teaching in my life. So, hey. I'm just putting that out there. People are like, nope, all we need is the Bible. Great. Then read the Bible. You should have no fear, no worry, no doubt, no struggle. If you do, then you need to align with a group of believers that will sharpen you. That's iron sharpens iron. We can learn from each other. Let's just be honest about that. But I am going to, uh, Marilyn said, thank you for sponsoring me. I love you, Marilyn. She's one of my students that sponsored. We love her. So if this is how the classes come. I don't know if you guys can see this. And it's on this this. Cool little app if I click this all the lessons will pop up right here if I click day one or I, sorry I click day two you get me and then here's your curriculum and all that good stuff Hold on, pause that can you guys see that do 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 all of that good stuff is in there 
So please go sign up, be a part of my academy. I'm opening it for a short period of time and then I'm closing it down and I will focus on new students and current students. So just know that. Second thing I wanna say before I start praying, prophesying, speaking in tongues and uh, <laughs> laying social media hands on you is that the groan is is we've got the dates on the calendar the next groan the two night online gathering for the hungry it's not a gathering for everybody it's a gathering for the hungry and that is october 8th and 9th please sign up for that you can go to the grown.global the grown.global hey my sister yana i love you so much i thought i saw my brother when i say brother I say that so much, but I mean my actual real, like, biological, like, brother was on here, uh, Michael Dorsey. He is the oldest of the four boys. It was, we have the girls first and the boys. There's a total of eight of us and seven of us are still currently here. And so he is on here. I think he probably jumped off, but if you are on here, you need to stay on because I need to pray over you and lay social media hands on you but all right so i want to talk to you guys about getting your fire back how many of you on here will truly say like let's have an honest moment i'm gonna wait for feedback deborah you can click the link and you can go and see the different prices i see you asking about the cost i have a monthly plan that's around 20 dollars or so and it helps people that are on restricted incomes literally uh, a few coffees a, if you cut out starbucks three times, you'll be able to take care of it. I'm not saying that you get Starbucks, I'm saying that as a general statement for people, just to get a perspective of how low I've made it. I could easily charge what other people are charging quite a bit. And uh, I didn't feel led to do that because I don't need the $20 that much. But I do believe that when people invest in something, they actually take the time to get into it. Um, when you give something out for free, a lot of times people are like, oh, it's free, they never get to it. That's just, I'm just keeping it real. All right, and so, and plus it does cost me hours and hours and hours of time, just like your job would. So it is there, it's available. I hope you get signed up. I hope you get, uh, become a part. And uh, I'm taking the academy up a level. I'm taking them up. God gave me an instruction. He said, it's time for you to take the students up a notch. And so I just let them know on our on our live video this week, I said, I just want you guys to know that I have an instruction about the about taking it up. So I'll be doing that. But anyway, it's coming up 8th and 9th. That's the next grown. Get signed up. Get up. Become a part. Yeah, I know. I can talk about multiple things at once. I'm good like that. But um, so become a part. It's going to be great. My brother, Isaiah Salvador, is... Salvador is going to be with us and listen I've been in a few of his services I I don't think I've ever seen this with anybody else in all the services I've been at with all the amazing ministers I've only seen this unique thing happen with him every single time he preaches so you know when people preach and they get to a really good part everybody will stand up and start clapping and just kind of stand up and let you know like yeah that was a good part like we're standing up this is our amen we're, we're standing up uh, that's how we do it. We were brought up. We we stand up. We like a part. We stand up. Sometimes I go to services and I'm the only one that ever stands up. I'm like, what's going on? They don't stand up here. <laughs> um, but I've never seen anybody preach that when they come out and they get the microphone and from the first sentence, everybody's on their feet. And I've seen it three times now where he preaches the entire sermon and everybody stands up for the whole thing whole thing like we just don't even sit down you can't you cannot sit down so he's gonna be on with, on with us for the grown uh, host the grown group all of that good stuff I'll be on more tomorrow to talk about it I don't come on normally on Saturdays but I am I'm gonna be on tomorrow to talk about it thank you Lori what a blessing thank you for that encouragement thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you all right, so um, sometimes I can't read all the comments because they're going fast, but still put your comments. Let's pray. Let's begin to pray. I'm going to minister in prayer and whatever the Lord gives me as well. All right. 
And I'm gonna play this music because I just, I like this. I have my guitar ready though, in case I wanna sing the song of the Lord. You are gonna get your fire back. So let me encourage you. Some of you have said, you know what, I've lost my fire. Some of you have thought, I'm just not passionate like I used to be. I'm not passionate like I see that person. I'm not, you know, radical in my worship. And some of you have even looked at yourself and said, what's wrong with me? You're thinking, why can't I be like that one? And why can't I be like that one? First and foremost, we break that spirit of comparison right now. That is a trick from the enemy. But secondly, let me just encourage you. If you even have an unction, like, I know that there's more and I want to get there. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But definitely don't look at someone else's and say, I want that. We should be looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I want to be on fire like Jesus was on fire. Come on. I don't want to be on fire like so-and-so in this one I read about. And that's all great and good, wonderful. We can look and be inspired and feel encouraged. But I don't desire to operate like that person. I want to follow after Jesus Christ. And so I'm just encouraging, on, encouraging you tonight. The message is you're going to get your fire back. You're going to get your fire back. But here's the thing. You are not going to get your fire back by just saying, I want my fire back. And then sitting. And going, where's it at? Oh, it didn't drop yet. That's not the way this is going to go. Not this season. Not this year. No, 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 not, no. That's not, the, that's not what God's doing. No, no, no. This is how you're going to get your fire back. Diligently seeking him. In the word of God. I want to hear thus saith the Lord. What is God saying this season? Pressing through prayer. Lord I don't feel like praying. My spirit does not even feel like praying. My body does not feel like praying. My, my feelings don't want to. I, I don't have no. There's no mood. There's no, nothing getting me hyped about praying. But I'm going to pray anyway. I'm going to say what I know to say. And then the rest I'm going to speak in tongues. And let the Holy Ghost pray through me. Because I want my fire back for real. I want my fire back for real. I want to be able to walk through Walmart. My God, I want to be able to walk through Walmart. And I want someone to come up to me and say, I don't know you, but I just feel, can you just pray for me? I want to be able to discern when I need to speak a word to the cashier. I want to be able to discern when I tell my husband, I don't know why, but we need to go right this time, not left. I know we normally go left. But I'm hearing the Spirit of the Lord say, we need to go right. And I want to be so led and so on fire for Jesus that every move, every step, every thought, every feeling is in line with heaven. That's why I'm coming on here tonight to tell you, you're going to get your fire back if you really want it. And if you really want it, then you will dig your heels in and you will say, I will not move this place until I hear from the Lord. I will not move from this place until I hear the sure enough, absolute, sanctified word of God. This is the most fired up I've ever been on a Facebook Live. I hope my whole family, are y'all hearing this? I want the real thing. I just did a Facebook Live in a small group. And I'm bringing that whole thing over here. I want the real thing, baby. Not the hype, not the fluff, not the celebrity itis, not the, oh my God, so and so's here. No, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus at noontime, Jesus at night, Jesus in the midnight hour. You can have the world, but give me Jesus. I want my fire back. The three Hebrew boys. Can I just talk about that for a minute? Because I'm really, really going somewhere and then I'm going to pray for people. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Ghost fire will hit you right in your house. And just like we do on the grown and just like we do with all the Facebook lives, we are going to believe that God will move through social media. I said it earlier. I'm fixing to lay, lay hands on you via social media. Social media hands. I'm about to lay hands. <laughs> 
And I'm telling you, there's impartation of what has been given to me is, is being passed to you. I've been in services where our focus has been just Jesus, just Jesus, not hype, not fluff, not entertain me, not, mm, I don't know about that service. I didn't do it for me. You don't need a service to do it for you, honey. You need Jesus. Get your fire back. And when you walk in, you walk in with fire and you don't need anybody to hype you. You don't need any worship leader to sing your favorite song. You don't need the pastor to read your mail. You're coming in with fire. They're having to carry you out and everybody else is walking. You're like, what happened to y'all? Y'all didn't get it. <laughs> oh my God. I want to see fire in every, every, every believer. One thing I, I, I hate so bad and it grieves my spirit. It grieves my spirit is when I see people not walking in what God called them to walk on. Uh, is that my spiritual mama? I say she's my spiritual mama. She's been like, really like, I want to say almost like a grandma to me. And I love you and I mean this. She like, like bakes me cakes and cookies and loves me and makes me blankets. And like, she's cared for me in that kind of way. And that is Mama Pippin. And I love you so much. I love you so much. But I want to just say this to y'all. We are in the in the hour right now where I can I can say it like two different ways. I feel the seriousness of God. Not that God has not been serious in the past, but there is a heavy level of the fear of the Lord the sovereignty and reverence of God that is returning. Sovereign reverence of God. I think so many times we get so distracted by the pettiest, pettiest things I could ever imagine. And the only reason why I'm saying it is because I have been an absolute participant in the pettiness. I will be the first one to confess. I hope somebody on here will keep it real like I'm doing. I know what it's like to go into a service and be like, I don't like these songs. I don't like this. So-and-so sat in my seat. They knew I was going to sit there. That, that one didn't speak to me. Why didn't she hug me? I wonder if what she wrote on Facebook was about like all this pettiness. And Jesus is over here going, hello, are you even going to talk and acknowledge me in my own house? We need to fire back. We need to fire back where people will come into the house of the Lord and not worry about who gave them a handshake. They'll get on their face at the altar at, before they even start singing and they will press in and pray. And they will pray the pastor through. And they will pray for their brother and sister. And they will leave their gift at the altar, their song, their hype, all of that stuff. And they will go to Sister Sally and say, Sister Sally, I just want to let you know that I had this thing in my heart that was not right. It was not of God. I'm coming to you to ask you to forgive me. And I repent to you before I even think about lifting my hands. Because you know what, Sally? I want my fire back. I want my fire back and this is what it's going to cost in this hour a a real true move of Holy Ghost Holy Spirit filled people that are seeking his righteousness his holiness and the kingdom of God Fire burns that stuff away. Yes, it does. It burns it all out. That's why we say, send the fire. We're thinking that we're saying, send the, whole, send the, um, the goosebumps. We're saying, Lord, send the fire. Send, set a fire down in my soul. Honey, if you only knew what the fire really did, you may think twice about just singing about any old thing that you're not really giving rever rever reverence to. 
And I'm not saying that in a condemning way. I'm just saying because I've been so stirred and God has really challenged me to go deeper on my lives. He's, I love coming on encouraging. You guys go back through all my lives. I encourage you. You can do it. Go. You got that. And God's saying, I want you to give the, some more meat now. Some more meat. Some more ouch moments. Just like I'm doing with my academy. We're all, we're all, if, if someone's not saying ouch, I'm not doing a good job. I'm not doing what God called me to do. I'm calling everybody on here to really, really get in the face of the Lord. Get really, really back to holiness, righteousness, the fire of God. So like I was saying, we can sing about God send the fire. But you know what the fire really actually really does? It's not goosebumps. It's not fallout. It's not even really anything that we feel. That's not the purpose of the fire. The purpose of true fire is to refine you and get some of that junk up out of you so that you can come out as pure gold. You know what pure gold is like? Movable, pliable, shapeable, makeable. You can be molded in the hand of the Lord. Without the fire, you are hard, rigid, restricted, and bound up. What? Wow, I didn't even know I was going to say that. We need the fire. Impurities come up in the fire. Most people pray for the fire, and then guess what happens? When God sends the fire, they go, oh my gosh, what's wrong? And then they retreat back to their first, uh, they retreat back to step one. And every time God brings them, okay, let's take you up a level. Step two. Ow. No, I don't like how this feels. Physically feels because we've taught people to feel good. Oh, come to church. I'm going to rub you, give you a massage. I'm going to, to give you all this encouragement. And as soon as they don't like, as soon as God starts poking and prodding and saying, this has got to go. This has got to go. Your attitude sucks. This ain't right. Get this together. You have dishonor here. You're not right. We, people don't like that. They're like, ah, but God is saying, I want to give you fire for the nations. I want to give you fire for your ministry, your house, your marriage, your life. But I'm going to need my fire to consume all that you have first. So there's nothing left but me. Nothing left but me. Let it begin in me, Lord. Take it all. All of it. Every bit. If it ever tries to come before you, every platform, every opportunity, if it tries to come before the living God, you need to go ahead and like I'm doing, give God permission, snatch it away, snatch it. Before I get too comfortable and I don't pray this prayer in the future, I'm praying it now, snatch it away. Yes, Lord, don't let anything get before you. Don't let what I want get before you. Don't let my feelings of me being comfortable get before you. I'm not here to be comfortable. I'm here to be obedient. I'm here to get my fire back. And the fire comes from pressing in. Not, okay, everybody open your word. And then you open your word. You, that's the first time you open your word all week. Well, you, Sister Jenny, I'm so busy. Uh, and I saw when I was scrolling on Facebook, I saw a lot of scriptures. People posted. I, 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 I. I, I sang four songs, Christian songs, on my way to work. I had the, the, the um, we call it here, the Joy FM. I had the Joy FM on. I'm not knocking where you are, but I am going to say this with all honesty, the only way that I can say it. There's more, and God wants us to come up. That, 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 what I just described there, I feel like even unbelievers do that. That's the level. We can all come up. And someone's going to get on here. I know it because people do it on my Facebook lives all the time. They have to always debate everything anybody is trying to do. The debate crew is going to come out the closet. 
and they're gonna say, well, you don't know the heart of people. I'm not saying I know the heart of people. I'm just saying that there is more to this Christian walk than just a Sunday morning service where your pastor is giving you the word and you no longer seek God for yourself, but you're like, I want the fire. I wanna go to the nations. You gotta read your Bible every single day to be able to go to the nations. You gotta be able to worship God without a worship leader. You gotta be able to worship God in your home. Yes, in your home. You have to be able to cast out devils from your own children before you're trying to go to cast out devils out of everybody else. So I'm saying this because this is what God laid on my heart lately. There's more. He's not just telling me to say it. He's speaking to me about it. You're going to get your fire back. Ashley said, you're speaking right. Come on, thank you for the support, sister. Pam said, Pam Potter said, uh, yes, there's more. We need to come up. Can you guys share this video? I know it's a Friday night and everybody's out partying. I'm just kidding. But y'all help me share this. And you know somebody, you know somebody that needs to be encouraged. You know somebody that maybe you remember when you met them, you you met them, they were just the most on fire person you ever met. Send them the video, share it on your timeline, invite them, click invite, let them know God wants to speak to you through this young lady. God's calling us all pastors, apostles, prophets, ushers, greeters, Sunday school teachers, the person that just got saved yesterday the person that's been saved for 60 years, every last one of us, he's saying, come up here. Come up. Come up. He's saying, come up. There's fire. There's more. There's another fire. Do you know that when they purify gold, it's not just one time. They, it's, it's a process. There's more. There's more. You can get your fire back tonight if you yield to the Lord. Some people get so restricted, like, I don't want to do all that stuff. That's all works. The devil is a liar. I break and bind that. I don't know where that false teaching came from. Where now people say, well, you don't have to pray all that. And you don't have to fast anymore. And you don't have to tithe. And you don't have to have someone um, submit to someone like that. And have someone telling you what. I bind that spirit. I bind that false, demonic, deceiving spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We are getting our fire back. The true people that really, really, really want to actually follow the word of God. I'm for real. This is not just for, oh, that's an old school way. No, this is for the young ones coming up and all of us in my age range, 30, 40 and beyond. Everybody. There is a way that seems right. And I pray that we don't go down that way. But this is what I wanted to read, because this right here is just amazing. After this, I looked. This is Revelation chapter 4. This is John talking. After this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. He got to a place most of us are trying to get to. He was in heaven by the Spirit of the Lord. He was already in heaven. He had leveled up. He had gotten to a level in God where God took him by the Spirit into the heavens and started to reveal, that's why this is called the revelation of Jesus Christ. But yet, he looked up. We're looking up right now to the heavens, right? He was in the heavens and looks up and there was another level. There was another level. It says, after this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here. Come up. I know you are up already, but there's more. I know you're in the heavens, but there's more. Yes, you came up a level, but now you need to go through another fire and come up a little bit more. 
This is how you get your fire back. You don't stop pressing. You don't stop praying. You don't stop moving forward. You do not let hurt and wounds and offense and unforgiveness keep you stuck and retreating and stagnant in your calling. That's why God is telling you tonight, you will get your fire back. But I'm telling you, you're going to need to put one foot in front of the other. Come out of that cave. Come out of that depression. Come out of that isolation. Come out of that feeling sorry for yourself. Come out of that, I'm not going to trust anybody else no more. No, mm -mm, I'm done. The devil is a liar. Stop speaking and decreeing those curses over your life. Come up. Let the fire of God consume you. We need to pray that tonight. God, we need, we need your fire. We want your fire. It doesn't matter what it costs, God. We want your fire. We want more of you. We got to have more of God. He said, come up here. And John was taken up. That is one of the most incredible things I think I heard in the Bible. Besides the story of Jesus coming and dying on the cross for us. He was up. And God is saying, now there's another level in heavens, different dimensions, different realms. I couldn't imagine what he was feeling just being in heaven. And then God said, now there's another door. I want you to come up here. And then it said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. There's revelation when you press and he, he takes you up a level. There's revelation. Some of you can avoid trouble if you would just keep pressing because God's going to reveal it to you and give you downloads and insight and blueprint and strategies on how you can avoid the, tr the turmoil that you're in right now because you got into it because you didn't see it in the first place. Hey, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but God's like, I want to remove the scales off your eyes if you could just come up. If you could just press past what your neighbors are saying, if you could just press past the petty stuff on social media, if you could just press past how you feel about this one and that one and this one shouldn't be doing this and this one, press, press in. There's more. There's more. There's more. If you got to cut off friendships, relationships, conversations, backdoor uh, inboxes about people, cut it off. I'm sorry, I can't talk. I'm sorry, I can't do that. No, I can't come over. No, you can't come over. Press. Because God is saying, I want to give you that fire. I want to give it to you. But in this state right now where you're in, it's going to hurt you bad. But if you would just press in, remove all that stuff, this fire is going to be good for you. And it is going to burn out these impurities. Burn out these impurities. And then look what the next verse says. And at once... I was in the spirit and behold, the throne stood in heaven. The fire coming up a level, pressing in, not giving up, keeping your eyes on God. The reward, the prize is Christ Jesus, more of God. Not, I need more money. I want to be famous. I want to go all over. I want this platform. I want so-and-so to recognize me. I want my book to do well. And yeah, it's good to have dreams, ambitions, wants, and these things. And God wants us to be successful. He wants us to have life more abundantly. But what he does not want is for any of that to be over him and to be the focus and the priority. And when we get those things in order, he says, then all these things will be added unto you. You won't even have to worry. You won't even have to worry about it. And you won't worry because it's not your focus anyway. Burn it all out, God. That's right, Julian. Lord, burn it all out. Who on here tonight is saying, I want my fire back? I'm going to begin to pray. I feel like that was good. We, I gave what God gave me. And now I want to press in and I want to pray. And I want to be able to prophesy. And I want to be able to speak into your life. Come on. Come on. If you're, that's you, say that's me. That's me. I want, I want prayer to get my fire back. I want an increase of fire on my life. Thank you, Samantha. Samantha says, that's me. God, I pray that you touch her right now with your holy fire. Some of you are going to begin to physically feel fire on you. And that's God just confirming to you. Some, some people need different 
manifestations of his spirit and God knows what you need. And that, that fire is going to come upon you even from watching this Facebook live. And I'm telling you, you need to brace yourself. You need to prepare yourself. This is not a goosebump fire. This is not a goosebump fire. This is not for goosebumps. If you want goosebumps, do not say that's me. This is not goosebumps. This is refining fire. Yes, God, we want the real fire. God, we want the real fire. Keep writing, that's me, if that's you. You're on here. You're saying, I want more. I want to be really, truly refined. I've had fire before, but God, put me back on the wheel. Put me back in the fire, all-consuming fire. You are the refiner's fire. You are the launderer's soap. Wash me, cleanse me. If there be anything, any little thing, any unknown thing, any unseen thing that I don't even know yet, God, get it out of me. God, rip it out of me. I don't want anything hindering, anything causing me to be in lack or slow me down or hinder me or be a stronghold in my life. God, rip it out tonight. Burn it out. Burn it out of me. Come on. We need some people that will really press in and pray. Really press in and pray. Father, I pray right now that you would release the fire. You would release the fire of God right now on each and every person. God, that your fire would come in and burn out every demonic stronghold. That that intense, intense fire, God, that intense fire, God, that will take them into the next realm of your spirit, that will take them into the next dimension of your spirit. God, burn out anything that hinders any religious mindset, any false and unsound doctrine. Burn it out of us, God. Burn out that pettiness. Burn out complacency. Burn out laziness. Burn out victim mentality. Burn out depression. Burn out schizophrenic mentality. God, burn it. Burn out double-mindedness. Burn it out, God. Burn it out. Burn out that critical spirit. God, if anybody is on here and you have been critical over ministries, over great men and women of God, and you have been putting your mouth on great men and women of God, you need to repent and let the fire of God refine you. I know that's a hard one because you're like, well, they're not operating. Do not put your mouth on the men and women of God, let God deal with them. But do not do that. That will cause fire to go out in your life. If that is you, I'm telling you, you need to repent and ask God to burn it out. If you have ought towards your brother or your sister, you need to begin to pray that God will help you to forgive. You can't do it on your own. I'm telling you, some things are just very hard, especially where there was deep hurt, trauma, and even from childhood or years ago. You need the Lord to help you. But say, God, I'm ready. If you would just help me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God, I can forgive them with the strength of you. I can forgive them if you help me, God. And I'll ask God, invite him into that area. Don't say, I just can't do it. And ask God to help you and let the fire of God come in and begin to refine. Even right now, people are feeling the fire of God touch them from the top of their head under the soles of your feet. This is not a goosebump fire. This is a burn it out fire. This is not a feel good fire. This is a refine me, God, sanctify me, put me back in. I need more work. This is a, I need more work fire. I need to go back in. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. There's something that needs to be burned out of me. Please help me to share this video as the fire of God moves. I pray that it goes all through social media, that every person that clicks play, that all of a sudden they will feel the fire of God. They will feel the fire of God. Father, I 
Father, I thank you that you're moving mightily. I thank you, God, that you are causing the fire to go and cleanse and purify some things in our spirit that we've had, God. We lay them before you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that those that feel like they used to have fire back in the day, God, that you are not going to get them to that same fire, but they're going to increase that and far succeed even how they used to be. Because God, you don't want to take us backwards, but you are a forward God moving forward. Come on, keep putting in the comments. Everybody that wants God to move, let's put up fire emojis and say, God, move. God, burn it out. Burn out anything in me, God. Anything that's in me rejection burnout rejection where i call, where i want people's applause and people's recognition more than i want to be obedient to the word of god where i need people to affirm me before i move into what god said god burn that out of us tonight in the name of jesus christ burn it out of us god as we lay before you anything god search our heart See if there be any wicked way within me and lead me in the way of everlasting. God created me a clean heart and, and re restore unto me a right spirit. For the sacrifices of God. Come on. We are praying this. We are praying this. Purge me, God. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, God, and I'll be whiter than snow. Hear me. J let hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Come on, I'm praying now. Psalm 51, straight out of the Bible. Oh, God. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out my iniquities. What am I? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence, God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Somebody needs to press in tonight. Take not your Holy Spirit from me, but God, give me a fresh baptism of Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Now, restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners will return to you. Then I can move forward. Then I can do what you called me to do. Burn it out first. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. My spirit's not always in the right place. God, get me back in line when I want to get all crazy. And when I want to let my flesh and my carnal thinking run the show, get me back in line. Put me back on the wheel. Let the fire burn in me again. Listen, I know I won't get too many views on on this one because people do not like this message they want bless me bless me give me mega this uh so finance no, listen no not right now we need to get this right we need to get this right because god's calling us to get this right burn in me god whatever it takes god i say yes yes when it doesn't feel good, yes. When I'm uncomfortable in a situation, yes. Burn it out of me. When I have to do things I don't want to do, I really, really, truly don't want to do, but I know you want me to, I say yes. The fire's burning out my will. So I will only be able to say, not my will. But your will be done. Whatever you want to do. I live to worship you. I live, breathe, move, speak, blink. To worship you. Everything's to worship you. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my laid down life. If all I have is my life ministry family that's all i have to give i'll give it easy 
burning me again. Till I'm not concerned about my own desires anymore. Burning me again. Burning me again. Till all fleshly wants and pleasures of this life, pleasures of the world, are, are burned out. Burning me until I burn for you. Until I yearn for you. Not my will. Yours. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. For the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Wherever you are today, I'm telling you, God is moving on this Facebook Live. And he wants to restore your fire and give you a fresh touch. Fresh touch. Fire burns out depression. Fire burns out addiction. It did it for me. Fire burned out addiction to meth. Fire burned out addiction to heroin. Fire burned out withdrawals to the point of almost dying. Fire burned out the desire to want to sleep around. Fire burned out the desire to get attention in any way possible. Fire burned out depression where all I wanted to do was lay in the bed all day and cry all day. Fire burned out double-mindedness where I was doing this one day and changed my mind the next day and couldn't make any sound decisions and couldn't move forward and stuck all the time. Fire burned that out. Fire burned out dishonor. Fire burned out where I didn't want to submit to a leader. Could never say yes sir or yes ma'am. Always had to put my opinion in. Moved in witchcraft and rebellion even in the church fire burns that out if you allow it to fire burns out woe is me mentality where you know the word of god but you cannot stop saying i need this i need it's like it became a part of your identity and god wants to burn it out so you can move forward in what he's, he wants to see you moving in your calling more than you want to see you moving in your calling the fire getting in God's word pressing in pressing into him that's the answer for every everything how do you get rid of this how do you get rid of that pressing into God like you've never pressed in before pressing in what does that mean Jenny that means I'm not just worshiping on Sundays I'm taking chunks out of every single day Every single day, true people that really want freedom and deliverance, they will press in. Just like we press in every day to get to our job. We really want to go there. Even if you don't, there's something that causes you to want to be there or you would not go. There's something that causes you to turn the TV on. There's something that causes you to get on social media. That same thing that causes you to do these things. That there needs to be a, a, a desire in you. Before all of that, to seek God, to seek God, to seek God. He's the answer. He's the answer. You could get a million hands laid on you from here to California, from Florida to California, and then get hands laid all the way back. But if you are not truly seeking God, seeking first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, then I'm telling you, you're going to get hands laid on you, fall out, get back up and be bound up and you continue the cycle. Because it's, you have to get, that's why he said, work out your what? Your, your salvation, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not being scared, but the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord. I reverence you when I come to your house. I reverence you in my home. I don't speak any kind of way to people. I don't say any kind of thing. I don't say praise God with this and then in the next mouth I'm cussing and I'm cussing people out and I'm nasty to people and waitresses. That's not how we do it. We get before God and we say burn this stuff out God. 
burn it out God burn out pride burn out what I want burn out this critical spirit burn out this dishonor where I feel like I have to tell everybody what my pastor is doing wrong I was just listening to a sermon this has got me stirred up I was just listening to uh, Dr. Bynum back in the day Dr. Bynum where she used to wear the bun and the black from head to toe the long long skirts for the white I was listening and she was stirring my spirit I, I don't even know if I could ever share that word on, on all honesty I don't even know I have to pray about that because it is one of the hardest roughest rebukes I've heard to the church in a long time but where are the people that will press in for the things of God and say you can have and the reason why I say I'm not gonna I can't share it just yet is because it will cause probably 95% of the people on my, my page to manifest For real. I may post a clip of it though. I don't know. But I just want to tell y'all, I love you so much. And you know what? For real, if you're on here and you've been writing this video this long, then I know. I know that you want God more than what than what's been presented. There you go. Come on, Jennifer. Well, you know what, y'all? When I see stuff like this, it's a humbling thing to me when people comment, forgive me for cussing, and take and she says, take the filthy words out of my mouth. You know, to be able to post that on a video, but you know that thousands of people are going to see that video, they're going to see your name, just, just to have that heart that says, I don't even care anymore who sees, I, I need God to take this. And you just want to live right. You just want to live right. And I'm not saying you cuss, you're going to hell. I'm not that kind of person. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying God's called us to a higher standard. And the fact that you just prayed that, my sister, can I just encourage you? You're on the right road. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. And God's moving in your heart. Because you wouldn't even be able to say that unless the Holy Spirit was convicting you and moving. I just told my students that in our webinar this week. Someone was saying, some, or no, it was on this Facebook Live I did um, earlier this week on Tuesday. A lady said, God forgive she said, Jenny, can you pray for me? I want God to remove pride out of my heart. And I said, you know what? You wouldn't even say that. So just encourage you. You can get a little encouragement behind you. You wouldn't even be able to say that and confess that unless the Holy Spirit was convicting you. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts the world of sin. It also says that no one can come unless the Holy Spirit draw them. The people are coming to the Lord. They want more of God. They're confessing their sin. Right there you say, okay, I'm not as bad as I thought because God's actually moving in my life right now. Amen? It's a beautiful thing. I know tears. It's a beautiful thing. It is. God forgive me because I haven't had my spirit right all the time. I was just on tour. This music went off. I'm going to share this one story. I did not know I was going to share this. I really honestly... I really didn't know I was going to share this. Oh, here it goes. Because y'all know I got to be transparent. But here it goes. I was just on tour this week. No, not, not this week. Last week, I was on a tour in California called Just Jesus. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to a conference with me. Maybe you, some of you are new to my ministry. I have an online shop. I sell t-shirts and hats and Christian gear. And I just design it and come up with the ideas. And and uh, yeah, so I bring that everywhere I go. And I make it a point to go to my product table after services. And a few different reasons. One, people are waiting at the product table. They want me to sign my book, sign CDs. They want to take pictures. They want to say something to me. They want prayer. Um, a number of things. Second reason why I go to my product table is because it's good for the product table. It gets gets the product moving. I don't want to take all that stuff home. I want it to go, as anybody would. And we're doing the Just Jesus tour. And 
the Holy Spirit tells me in the tour, uh, this is going to help somebody because everybody thinks, well, ministers don't ever go through something. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. So, um, my music just went off. The Holy Spirit tells me, you're not going to your product table. And I said, what? I'm getting ready to go to the product table. You don't get to go to your product table. And I'm like, this is how I just talk internally. Is, why? Why? If I don't go, I mean, there, I can see the line. There's people waiting. They're expecting me to go. I always go. This is just what I do. No, you don't get to go to the product table. And so I said, again, why? And the Holy Spirit prompted me and said, on this Just Jesus tour, it will only be about just Jesus. You're not even going to get to go to the product table and get any kind of praise at all. And he was poking something here and saying, I'm checking you here. This is good for for leaders to admit you're not you're not going to the product table. And you know what? It's for the whole tour, all seven the whole week, you don't get to go to your product table. And I didn't get to go to my product table at all. You're not gonna get anybody that's gonna clap. Oh, Jenny, you and and all of that. Listen, I get that because I do that with other people. I want to share like, wow, your ministry really touched me. But for me, the Lord was saying, I'm checking something in your heart and making sure we get this under the blood. You're not getting any praise on this Just Jesus tour. It's going to be about Just Jesus the whole time. And even when service is over at the product tables, it will still be about Jesus. So I got off the platform if I wasn't laid out on the floor. <laughs> Last night I was. Everybody left. And left me on the floor. <laughs> but I would get up. I would look at that product table. and be like, I want to go over there. And I would carry myself to the back. Now, if people didn't know that, they would say, she didn't even come out here. Wow, she's so snobby. She's so stuck up. Because I've heard people say that about other leaders. But what God was saying was, you're not getting any praise. None. So, what I'm telling you is, God's refining us all. And if he's not checking you, and if he's not taking you through the process of restoration and refining, then I would go back to him and say, Lord, are you really moving in my life? Because that's what he does. That's what he does. So I'm just, I shared that with you. And I was like, man, I told my team, I shared that with them, my, my core, core team. They're on here. Did I not? I said, I don't even know if I could share that with everybody because... Everybody's not going to get that. And that's a real, real personal, deep thing. But I felt I felt the release to release that. And uh, I hope that it helps you. I'm listening to the heart of worship. What a better, there's no other, there's better song than this right here. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing that I've made it. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm bringing you more than a song. A song in itself is not what you require. You search much deeper, deep, deep down. Our motive, our thoughts. You're looking into my heart. I'm going to let this ride out for a minute and then I'm going to close out. Please share this. It's all about you. It's all Yes. Come on, Marquita. 
Stephen Stevenson. Yes, come on. It's all about Jesus, guys. Thank you, Jennifer Storm. Storm, sorry. Babe, Keisha. Leslie. Yes. Helen. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, guys. Come on. Marilyn, bless you. Uh, this song is called Heart of Worship. It's by Upper Room. Beth, bless you, bless you. Thank you, Beth. Jamar, my brother, bless you. Bless you, Cheryl, my dear student, bless you. Yeah, come on. Uh, the name of the song, Leslie, is The Heart of Worship. This is the upper room style. This song is probably, I want to say close to probably 15 years now. for the grown. I will see you guys tomorrow. Be blessed. Bye-bye.